The Shih Tzu is a small, lovable dog with a long history. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how they went from the lap dogs of Chinese nobility to the dogs we know and love in the modern day. Welcome back to the Fenris Shih Tzu Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Charlie and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. Everything we do here is dedicated to helping you find the perfect breed for you and then helping you become a high-level canine leader who can raise the perfect canine companion. If that sounds like you, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to make sure you never miss another upload. So, let's dive right in. The history of the Shih Tzu is a long and very interesting one. The Shih Tzu is one of the oldest types of dog breed in the world. In fact, scientists have found fossils of Shih Tzu ancestors that date back over 10,000 years. This breed was given to Chinese emperors as gifts by Tibetan monks. Buddha was said to have ridden to earth on the back of a lion. Tibetan monks believed that the Shih Tzu were sacred as they looked like lions. The Chinese were credited as creating the breed, but they were in fact from Tibet. Tibetan dogs are descendants of a dog breed called the Gobi Desert Kitchen Midden Dog. These dogs were mostly untamable and were wild dogs. From the Gobi Desert Kitchen Midden Dog, a new breed called the Small Soft Coated Dropped Eared Hunting Dog was created which evolved into the Kitchen Midden Dog. The Kitchen Midden Dog was used in distinct breeding programs and the outcome of these breeding programs created the Papillion, the Pekingese, Tibetan Spaniel, Japanese Chin, the Pug and the Shih Tzu. During the Manchu and Ming Dynasty, Shih Tzus were bred in a palace with Munichs. They were owned exclusively by the Royal Court. The Shih Tzus were barely seen out of the palace and they were carried inside nobles robes and were even used in the emperor's and empress's bed as bed warmers. Anyone who owned the breed outside of the palace was sentenced to death. As we said, the Shih Tzu was given to the Chinese emperors as gifts around the time of the Qing dynasty in 1644 and 1662. The Shih Tzu has appeared on tapestries dating back 2000 years ago. The breed was referred to as the lion dog. The Chinese went on to breed Shih Tzus to look as much like little lions as possible. It was thanks to the Chinese Emperor Sixi who came into power in 1860 who moulded the breed into the Shih Tzu we know today. The Empress was supposedly gifted a Lhasa Apso by the Dalai Lama. The Empress bred the Lhasa Apso and Pekingese and this created a litter of Shih Tzu puppies. Hey guys, I wanted to very quickly let you know if you're not already that you should absolutely be following us over on Instagram. There'll be links down in the description box below but we've got multiple Instagrams. One for Fenrir, our company, where you can see all of the awesome things that we're doing over there. You could follow me personally over on Instagram, or maybe come and check out our journey with our 12-week-old English Mastiff puppy Eileen. Either way, can't wait to see you over there. Empress Sixi had many large Shih Tzu breeding facilities that were destroyed during the Communist Revolution. Unfortunately, not many Shih Tzu survived. Some of the ones that did were imported to the UK. In 1938, the breed standard for the Shih Tzu was written. After being imported to the UK, Shih Tzus were bred with Pekingese, and the breed was perfected in between 1930 and 1950. The Shih Tzu Club of England was created in 1934, and the breed was officially recognised by the UK Kennel Club on the 7th of May in 1940. Around this time, Shih Tzus made their way across seas to America. In 1955, the American Kennel Club accepted the breed, but they were only accepted into the miscellaneous class because there were only a handful of the breed around. The Shih Tzu Club of America was set up in 1957 to try and make the breed become more recognised and popular. In 1961, there was still only 100 Shih Tzus registered in the USA. In another attempt to try and get the breed to become recognised, the Shih Tzu Club of America merged with the Texas Shih Tzu Society. Only a year later, the amount of Shih Tzus registered went from 100 to 300, and by 1965 there was nearly 700. In 1969, the American Kennel Club finally recognised the Shih Tzu as the toy dog class as an official breed. Since then, the popularity has exploded in the United States, and in 2013, the Shih Tzu was ranked the 15th most popular breed, according to the American Kennel Club. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button and get involved down on the comments section below. And don't forget, if you are new here, to make sure you subscribe. We have two dedicated Shih Tzu videos coming here every single week. So, I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Shih Tzu Show.